Lekker, lekker, lekker. The Netherlands, leading the way in offshore wind energy. With our background in maritime and offshore civil engineering, the Netherlands have become an important centre of offshore wind development and construction. Offshore wind energy currently generates 1.5% of the electricity demand in the Netherlands, and this percentage will grow to more than 15% in 2023. Offshore wind supports over 4,000 jobs in the Netherlands and the forecast is that by 2020, the offshore wind industry will have grown by 400% since 2015 to 16,000 jobs, exceeding a total turnover of 5 billion euro. By then, offshore wind will produce clean energy for 5 million households, more than two-thirds of the domestic electricity demand in the Netherlands. Wind energy will avoid the necessity of burning 5 million tonnes of coal each year. This makes us more self-sufficient and less dependent on other energy sources. In order to accomplish the ambitious growth targets, the Dutch offshore wind energy industry has the aim to reduce the costs by 40% in 2020 compared to 2010. For this transition, test and demonstration facilities are developed and the industry is developing many innovations. In the Dutch North Sea, over 3.5 gigawatts of offshore wind capacity will be newly developed over the coming five years in a unique tender system. The grid operator will supply offshore power sockets to connect multiple wind farms. 
The Dutch ports are ideally located to facilitate construction and maintenance of offshore wind farms in the North Sea. Dutch companies have had major contributions to all European offshore wind farms. The exported services include wind farm development, consultancy design and engineering, construction and installation, operations and maintenance, research and development. The Dutch industry, science and government are cooperating in a world-leading knowledge and R&D infrastructure making offshore wind the future of large-scale renewable energy generation. The Netherlands, leading the way in offshore wind energy. When most people think of national parks, they think of famous examples like Yellowstone and Yosemite in the United States or the Serengeti in Tanzania. These parks are large in scale with an emphasis on wildlife conservation and the preservation of scenic landscapes. Human activity and presence is restricted and regulated and people are mainly visitors. This does not imply that nature in these places has been untouched by humans. In Yosemite, for example, there has been farming in the past and the management of the park is far from passive. The question is not whether untouched nature is good and anthropocentric influence on natural systems is less desirable. The question is whether we would like to protect nature for the sake of nature or for the benefit of ourselves and other species. It is a question of grades of human interference and impact not one of untouched nature. And that is a logical approach, because the reality is that in many countries, nature conservation and human activity can never be separated like in Yosemite or the Serengeti. The Netherlands is probably one of the most extreme cases where nature and human activity are almost inseparable. About half of the country is at or below sea level, and most of the land area has been reclaimed or drained. As a result, the landscape of the Netherlands is mostly the product of human intervention. Therefore, the Dutch landscape can be best described as a cultural artifact. Because of this, formal protection of landscapes and wildlife came late. One of the early attempts to create protected areas came in 1928 with the Natuurschoonwet, freely translated as Nature Scenery Act. This act was mostly about protecting country houses set in park-like settings. Wibren Verstegen, senior lecturer in economic, social and environmental history at the Free University Amsterdam, has researched the Dutch Nature Scenery Act. In a recent article published in the Forest History Society's magazine Forest History Today, he discusses the Dutch Scenery Act in an international perspective. I interviewed Wibren at his house in the Netherlands about the Scenery Act, aristocratic landed estates and how it compares with estates in the southern United States and Canada. Listen to the interview with Wibren Verstegen on episode 73 of the Exploring Environmental History podcast. Download the podcast at www.eh-resources.org Thank you.